Hello and welcome to the channel. Uh, yeah, we're going to build an airplane. So this is the one that I've chosen. It's the P-51B Mustang by Tamiya in 140A scale. And this is going to be the construction part one, the cockpit. <laughs> Let's get started. Step one. Well, with all aircraft, uh, we start with the cockpit. And you can see here I've went in with my ink pen and put in some uh, little notes here on the colors that we're going to be using in the cockpit just to try and help speed up the process and so I don't get mixed up later on. <laughs> so the first thing we need to do is cut off all the parts that we're going to be using for the cockpit. Now I do take and when I cut these parts off I leave the sprue gates a little long on it that way I can trim them down more accurately without the uh, sprues being in the way. And you can see here we can just nip those off and not worry about cutting into uh, the parts themselves. And on some parts, as you can see here, there are indications of where you need to cut. So be careful that you don't cut off details. Now, once we got that trimmed off, we're going to come back in and anything that's flash or what have you that's in the way, uh, we'll just go ahead and take that off and a little sanding stick, smooth out the areas where the sprue gates were and any seam lines that's on the parts. So I'm also going to go in and I'm just sticking the seat frame in place and we're going to check the fit of the cockpit to the interior of the fuselage. That way if there's anything that's going to hold us off we can go ahead and take care of that before we get into painting. So I did notice that uh, we do have a couple of ejector pin marks down inside where the uh, cooler is going to go. Uh, so we need to take care of those. And also, we want to make sure that that seat frame uh, doesn't keep the parts uh, of the fuselage spread out too much. Um, or, I should say, at all. <laughs> so, I'm just going to use a canopy here to check and make sure that there's no issues with that. I just like to see what we're getting into, and it looks like we're going to be fine. So we're going to take and trim out these uh, ejector pin marks that we got inside the fuselage right here. Uh, this is just in front of that rear cooler that's going to go in underneath the cockpit. And I do take a little fine uh, sanding stick and we're going to take and just polish those out. So we need to take a look and make sure that we got everything. And it looks pretty good. All right, so far so good. So I am gonna go in and glue our um, flight control stick into place. I believe that's what you call it. And that way we won't have to worry about trying to hold this rather small part while we're trying to paint it. And once we get it glued in, we're going to want to check our alignment. We don't want it to interfere with our pilot because I believe we're going to try to paint up the pilot and put him inside too. So once everything's in good shape, uh, we can take and prepare everything for painting. So I do use these alligator clips here. Uh, just put them on the little tabs on the bottom of the parts where it's not going to be seen and it won't be in the way of painting. And so this is useful. Also, we got a couple of parts that we are gonna have an issue with when it comes to alligator clips. So I'm gonna use this blue stick. It's a uh, adhesive putty, but it doesn't stay in place. You can peel it right off. And we're gonna use this in an area where uh, it doesn't matter uh, whether or not there's any paint in there, like right on the back of the seat there. We won't be able to see that once it's assembled and there's also a void in the back of the pilot so we'll just place it right there hold our pilot in place 
So there are areas inside the cockpit uh, on the fuselage that we need to paint and also like right around the um, uh, where the tail wheel goes. So we're going to want to paint that up too because it's possible to see up inside the fuselage. Also we have this cooler here that's supposed to be painted flat aluminum. Uh, since it goes inside the fuselage we're going to go ahead and uh, take that part and prepare it for painting. Uh, it's always good to go through your instructions and try to paint up as much as you can so that you can get everything at the same time. And another thing we need to do is we need to trim out uh, these areas on the top of the fuselage above the cockpit. This is where the antennas go and so being very careful we'll take and trim those up before we start the painting process. So all the areas we're going to paint in the cockpit uh, and inside the fuselage I'm going to use this Vallejo black thin for the airbrush. Now once all that has dried uh, we have this rather large fuel tank. Uh, I believe it's a fuel tank. <laughs> so, um, it's supposed to be black. So I'm just going to mask that off. That way we're not going to be spraying it the color of the cockpit and that'll give us uh, the base color for the fuel tank. Now we do want to go in around the bottom edges uh, of our mask and make sure that that has sealed really good. We don't want any paint to creep up underneath uh, our mask. So I don't have any cockpit green, but I'm gonna use this basil acrylic craft paint and some warm brown craft paint in order to make this color up. Uh, so it's uh, about a quarter of a bottle here of paint in the green and about four drops of the brown. Uh, and then I thin it for the airbrush. And this paint really lays down really nice. I'm really impressed with this craft paint. Um, and it's a water-based acrylic, so it's easy cleanup and it adheres really good. So uh, we're gonna paint all of our cockpit areas. Um, also making sure that we get uh, our seats and uh, the seat frame and uh, all the interior uh, sections here inside the fuselage and I do spray it in uh, two different directions. We want to make sure that the inner frames that's inside the cockpit gets uh, paint on both sides of it. And let's not forget our tailwheel area either. So once that's dried, we can go ahead and take our mask off of our fuel tank. And that looks pretty good. <laughs> I kind of like that. All right. On to the next step. So Tamiya calls out these panels to be painted black as well. And uh, I'm just using uh, the Vallejo uh, acrylic, water-based acrylic paint to paint these areas. So we're gonna paint up these circuit breaker panels and we also have an oxygen hose uh, for our pilot that's molded in. We'll paint that up as well. And I suggest that you don't do this after four cups of coffee. <laughs> so, the handle on the uh, flight control, we're going to do that in black as well. Now we also have some controls, uh, probably trim controls and flaps. And we're just going to highlight those with a little bit of the black. So when it comes to our dash, or instrument panel, sorry, <laughs> I have this, I have this craft paint here. This is white and it is thinned, really thin, uh, a little bit thinner than you would uh, use for your airbrush, so that it flows really good. We're just going to use it um, to highlight the instrument dials, and I'm just using a toothpick here to do that or a cocktail stick for 
you more sophisticated people out there, <laughs> which I'm not. <laughs> uh, and you can see how it flows really good around the rim of these uh, gauges. And I'm hoping that that's going to really bring out the detail inside. It's going to be hard to see inside, so whatever we can do to uh, help bring out these details is a good thing. So here we have some galvanized tin metallic craft paint, and I've been wanting to try this for a while. Uh, and we're going to use this. Uh, we will use it to paint uh, this rack where the radio sets. So I did mask off this radio before spraying it and we paint the radiator with that uh, this is a liquid cooled engine so uh, this is the radiator for that and then we have an oil cooler in the front scoop underneath the fuselage so I painted it with the uh, same galvanized tin color I think that's what these parts are called you guys correct me if I'm wrong now with that done, uh, we can do a little bit of assembly here in our cockpit. So first up, uh, we're going to attach this uh, radio. And I'm going to use the thick Tamiya cement to do this. Now normally you would use uh, CA glue, that's what I'm trying to think of, because we are adjoining it to a painted surface but there is a little bit of movement in this part and I want to make sure that I can get it right where it needs to be before the glue sets up. Also I've cleaned these edges here on the seat frame. That way we don't have any paint interfering with the bonding of our glue and just want to make sure that we have those areas cleaned up. And I'm going to use the thick cement on the bottom tabs of the seat there is just a little bit of play there for the part and this thick cement will fill that for us and give us good contact so once the seat frame is in place with the seat we can go ahead and use the to me extra thin for those lower supports and that'll just flow right in and help secure that seat in place so now we're ready to do a little bit of dry brushing this is testers flat steel and I'm going to be using uh, testers enamel thinner as well uh, this is an enamel paint uh, and it dry brush is really nice. I found uh, that it works best if I go ahead and wet the brush a little bit and dry most of the thinner off of it and then dip it into the paint. And now we're going to unload the brush as much as possible and we just want a hint of paint on our brush that way when we're doing our dry brushing um, it's just a really really light and as you can see there just a light effect that we got going on and that's where the paint would be worn through and uh, the metal will be showing underneath we're going to do that to the floor of the cockpit as well and just lightly brushing that in and the edge of the seat now you should have to work to get those pigments uh, off the brush. Uh, if it comes off really easy, then you got too much paint on there. So that's kind of the key to dry brushing. And we're also gonna put some wear areas here on our radio and we'll do the fuel tank as well. And I've done the same technique over top of our dash. And it just kind of brings out the switches and the bezels on our gauges. And I think it looks pretty good. So we're going to do the same treatment uh, inside the cockpit area on the inner surfaces of the fuselage here that we painted. And this will bring out the switches on these uh, panels and the circuit breakers and uh, also any of the frames where the pilot would get up against and equipment would uh, take and chip through the paint. So I think my dials are just a little bit too white. Now these dials were black in the original aircraft so um, I'm kind of filling in the centers here just with a little bit of that Vallejo black. And this is a real thin mixture. This is the same airbrush mixture that I used to uh, prime the painted areas. 
So I don't, I don't want to overdo it. Uh, I'm kind of in between here <laughs> with how much to do. Uh, we are going to come in with some um, XF7 Red from Tamiya and just paint up a couple of uh, switches. And Tamiya calls for German Dark Yellow to be painted on this uh, headrest and pouch uh, here on the top of the seat frame. So we're going to go ahead and take and get that painted up. And we want to be careful and not get it onto the cockpit color, our cockpit green there. So we have a small issue that we need to think about, uh, and that is that uh, radiator the, or cooler. Um, it's going to be open uh, to the fuselage, more or less. And that's going to be a problem when we go to paint... Uh, the exterior of the aircraft. So I've taken this masking tape here and folded a uh, kind of a center section on it there, a tab, and we've placed it on the radiator or cooler, which, whichever it is, uh, and I'm just going to trim it off right around the edges of the part, and then I'm going to angle that tab a little bit, Now, with, with this part in place, if I can get my fingers where I need them, um, I think that tab is going to be out of the way for painting, but accessible to my tweezers. So once I've got the aircraft together, I should be able just to reach up inside there and pull that right out. So this is low tack uh, painter's mask tape so it shouldn't be an issue. We'll see how that works out. I hope it works out good for us. And now all we need to do is go ahead and secure this part into place with a little bit of uh, Tamiya Extra Thin. Now we want to be real careful that <laughs> we're not flowing any of this uh, glue in around the mask tape that we put in there. <laughs> so that, that could be a problem. And we can also go ahead and put our uh, rudder pedals, I believe, is what they're called. We can glue those into place. So I'm just pressing it down here to make sure that we got good contact and that the glue can flow around the part. And it's secure. There we go. That looks pretty good. Now I'm going to take this X-22, which is a gloss clear, thin for the airbrush, of course, and spray the cockpit with that, but I do not do the main instrument panel. I just leave it as is for now. Now, once that dries, we can come in with our Tamiya panel line accent color brown, which is what I'm going to use on this aircraft. And we're just going to do the edge detail and the rivets here. Uh, inside the cockpit and on these little floor panels just any little area where we want to bring out uh, those edges and we're just going to let it flow. Now I am using a paintbrush to do this instead of the brush that's normally in that, that you would normally use that comes with the bottle uh, that way I can target the areas much better and uh, Kind of minimize my cleanup. So the X22 Gloss Clear allows this uh, panel liner to flow so much better um, and you don't have to worry about it wicking out across the surface uh, and that helps minimize the amount of cleanup that you're gonna have to do. At least that's been my experience so that's kind of what I'm sticking with. And we're going to want to do the inside of the fuselage too, around the support frames and the circuit breakers and switch boxes and everything. Just kind of let it flow in. Now cleanup is easy. Uh, since we have coated it with that clear gloss, uh, we just need a dampened clean brush. And we just go in and just remove any of the panel liner that's uh, float away from the edges 
and just keep your brush clean and just go over the uh, areas where there's a little bit too much panel liner. I did get quite a bit too much here on the seat, <laughs> so we're going to have to clean that up. But uh, yeah, it goes pretty easy. And let's not forget about the uh, sides, the, the inside of the fuselage in the areas uh, where we put the panel liner around these uh, frames. So once everything dries, we're gonna come in with this Model Masters Acryl Flat Clear, and we're gonna coat all these painted surfaces in the cockpit and the cockpit area. Now I think this uh, Clear Parts Cement and Window Maker by Testers is gonna be uh, just the ticket that we need to work on our gauges. So I put a little bit on a uh, piece of cardboard here so I can dip my toothpick into it. And we're just gonna dab this on and kind of fill out uh, the area of each of the gauges. Being careful to stay within the, the bezel, the rim of the gauge. And this will give our gauges a nice glossy uh, appearance. Uh, some people use uh, CA glue for this, and since I have this uh, window maker, I, I'm going to use it and see what that looks like. It should make them nice and shiny, and that way the uh, gauges have the possibility, <laughs> I will say, of uh, actually being seen, although, you know, the, the viewing area inside the cockpit uh, from outside the aircraft is rather small. Now we can turn our attention to these edges here. There's this front um, section here on the cockpit where the glue is going to be. And, and this is hidden down inside the fuselage so you, you can't see it. Uh, I'm just going to take a little bit of rubbing alcohol and a Q-tip or cotton bud. Uh, whichever you call it uh, and just clean off all the acrylic paint uh, just be real careful that you only use this uh, where you want to remove some paint because that alcohol will take the paint right off so also do the little spot where the spacer is for the uh, uh, instrument panel and we're just going to go very carefully right inside where that's uh, the, the cockpit is going to make contact with the inside of the fuselage. And now uh, that our gauges are all dry, we can go ahead and glue up the instrument panel inside the cockpit. We're going to want to make sure that it is straight and square with the cockpit. And it doesn't hurt to slide this inside the fuselage just to make sure that everything is in position. And then we can just glue the tab on the very bottom of the instrument panel there where it goes through the bottom of the cockpit. And next up, we're going to have to take care of the pilot, but that will have to wait till part two of our construction uh, on our uh, P-51B Mustang here. Special thanks to all my subscribers. I appreciate you guys watching. And if you're new to the channel uh, and you haven't subscribed, uh, go ahead and subscribe. It's free and uh, you don't want to miss uh, the next videos that are coming up. So make sure that you hit that notification bell. And that way you'll be notified when I post a new update to this build. And also, please leave me a comment. Let me know how you think I'm doing so far on this uh, aircraft build that we got going on here. Uh, first aircraft in a very long time, so <laughs> uh, I'd like to know how I'm doing. And if you like this video, uh, give me a thumbs up. So, until next video, you guys stay safe. And I'll see you in the next video.